first off, I'll just say it doesn't matter because you own metals, presumably. I mean, there are some people who own metal because they want to make money. They want to buy gold at 1500 and sell it at 2000 or sell it at 2500. The real reason to own metal is for when the system actually fails. Understand that all currencies on the planet today are fiat. They're backed by nothing, which means they're actually worth nothing. When the system does fail and you own gold or you own silver, you own real money. Basically, you own a piece of all the real marbles on the planet. You will enter the next system with capital when the vast majority will enter the system with nothing. I've had multiple clients, uh, not most, because most who call, they've already they've already got their thought process straight on this and they, they know exactly what you just said is the fact that having real assets is the name of the game when trust is being lost in many, many quarters. But there are some people who actually use the following phrase. If the system were to collapse, if, if, if I buy metals and I have them, how do I, how would I get rid of them? Can you talk to us about why the, even thinking of it in that manner about wanting to know how you're going to get rid of metals is probably shows you don't understand the role that they actually play in your, your family's financial future. Exactly. Uh, once the system comes down, the thought process of, oh my gosh, how am I going to sell my metals and get dollars? Well, you won't want dollars because dollars won't be spending. The fact is, if you own gold or if you own silver, you already have money and you have the money that new monies are going to be based off of. So worrying about how you're going to get rid of metal is kind of a, a really ridiculous thought process because you will have people banging your door down, hopefully not armed to steal your gold or silver, but you'll have people banging your door down wanting money, wanting gold, wanting silver for a product, whether it be uh, chickens and eggs or somebody's car or a piece of property or whatever, you're going to have people wanting to liquidate assets for money. That money is gold and silver. That's the part that most people have just not experienced. Our grandparents, our great grandparents, everybody from the beginning of time until about two generations ago understood exactly because that was everyone's experience for their entire life. Uh, it's been, we're in this grand modern experiment that's been perpetrated on everyone and uh, people have actually forgotten or never learned uh, what what real money is uh, but that will come back i've got one other point uh, go back to the depression and understand that you know when banks failed you lost your money but if you had gold if you had silver you had you know if you had it in your possession if it was not in the banking system you had money uh, you had you had capital that you could bottom fish. Remember the stock market dropped 89% over the, whatever it was, the uh, three or four years. You had capital uh, that you were able to step up and buy assets with. You had money. And not only that, uh, they did devalue the, the dollar versus gold from $20.67 to $35. So not only did you have money, but that money went up in purchasing power. That's another thing that I make a point of that kind of is a real aha moment when people ask me that question because I told them that when I was a kid and we were on a tour of the Gulf of Mexico coast of Texas in 1968 about there was a gas price war and gas was going for 19.9 per gallon which is two dimes and those same two dimes from back then if they had 90% silver in them now could still buy you a gallon of gas so silver has held its own. It, and it still has the same, the same potency, the same purchasing power, the same value. It, it brought it into the future across all these decades and all these wars and all this inflation and deflation and everything. It just, it just came, brought it all through. And that was what it can do. I also had a coworker whose family in India survived for generations when his grandfather passed away unexpectedly and his grandma was able to keep the family together and keep their household going with the amount of the gold that they had in their family safe in, in the home. So uh, any comments from you on, on metal holding its own through convulsive times or holding your family together with solid things, which you've already talked on before. Yeah, I mean, the worst, the worst things get, the more demand there will be for gold and silver. Um, your, your question before was, okay, if the stock market drops 50%, will gold and silver get hit? 
Well, yeah, during times where, quote, uh, they, the powers that be, have control, yeah, they're able to knock, knock the prices down on COMEX. What we're talking about here, we're not talking about uh, a cyclical event. This is a secular event. This is an event uh, that will, this is a multi-generational event. It's the change of a, of a currency system. I mean, Bretton Woods too now is pretty much dead because Saudi Arabia is going to take uh, other currencies other than dollars. So it's no longer King, uh, king Dollar. Just understand that the worse things get and the more out of control the system becomes, the more gold and silver will be in demand because they cannot bankrupt, they cannot default in a system that is defaulting. Now, you just stated about how there will be increased demand, increasing demand for precious metals as real assets in the failing mark, uh, market of a currency. Uh, there's a question to the opposite here and see if you can help people clarify and get realize why this is different. Greg Austin says, as the CPI ramps up, so should the price of gold and silver. But what happens to precious metals prices when deflation pulls currency out of the system? That's kind of where you started us off today was uh, the M2 money supply decreasing. How does that impact metals or do they behave differently than all other assets? Well, first off, understand that yes, uh, gold and silver generally do well during inflation because the currency itself is is devaluing. On the other hand, in a outright deflation, what that means is you're going through a, a period of bankruptcy. You're going through a period of default. And as I mentioned before, the real reason you want to own gold and silver is because they are the only monies on the planet that cannot default, they cannot bankrupt. So you're going to have uh, people that are looking to uh, become liquid because they've lost their liquidity in the paper system. They're going to be selling assets for gold and for silver. And what that will do is that capital uh, from assets being sold for the purchase of gold and silver, that's going to explode the prices of gold and silver to levels at this point, uh, you know, unthought of because they can't bankrupt. That's that's the bottom line. Fear capital is going to end up in gold and in silver because once you have gold and silver, as long as it's, uh, you know, in a safe location, it's it's where it it's you don't have any more fear once you're in cash. And that's what gold and silver really are. They are, uh, they're cash. And think about this, throughout history, where was the best place to be when credit cycles busted? The answer was cash. The thing is, up in, or, uh, prior to 1933, cash worldwide was gold and was silver. And from 1933 on, then these currencies be, became derivatized, if you will, off of gold and silver. They, they, it was a, uh, the current money system that's fiat is basically a bastardization of real money, gold and silver. Those used to be the roots, and now there's no connection whatsoever to the point where uh, gold and silver are the anti uh paper currencies. They're the exact opposite of paper currencies. Um, as far as storage is concerned, I tell everybody that you should have at least one bag of junk silver on hand per person in your household. Um, gold is easily stored. I mean, you could store a million dollars in a couple of shoe boxes and, you know, bury them, hide them, whatever. Uh, if as far as silver is the better buy because of the ratio, the problem is storage. So if you've got a million dollars or five million or whatever, you know, you probably do want to store. You may want to store in two places or three places, diversify your risk. I mean, there's there's really no guarantee because you could have all that silver at your home and, you know, your home is invaded. Somebody uh, sticks a gun to your wife or your children's head and you're going to give them the metal. So you just you want to be you want to diversify where you hold it but you want as little between you and your metal as possible. And, you know, the nature of the beast is if you're going to store, you have to store at an institution, but make sure it's a non-bank institution.